Hi guys, so I'm gonna teach you guys how to get long lashes. This looks like one of those get ready with me videos, a makeup tutorial. But keep watching. Faroza Aziz is an activist, spreading awareness about the reported Uyghur oppression in China. Separating their families from each other, kidnapping them, murdering them. She's using the eyelash curling as a kind of disguise to protect her message from platform censorship. Please spread awareness and yeah, so you can grab your lash curler again. And to simply get more viewers. This post, 3.4 million views. Still, TikTok found the post and temporarily banned it. That's the challenge activists say they're facing online. They're fighting for free speech to get their message out, in part by circumventing censors, real or perceived, and ultimately to get their content in front of you. This is one of those popular day in the life reels, but it's not showing a fun coffee run or a gym date. It's showing life in a bomb shelter and the wreckage in Ukraine. It's also massively popular. Activists like Valeria Shashinok are spoofing popular social media trends to educate their audience about human rights and politics. I think that it's the most clever way to spread information about the topic. I like videos like that, even if someone will post about their, their daily routine, I don't know, during um, like uh, my daily routine in Mariupol. Mariupol now is occupied uh, under under Russian aggression. Here's similar content from Gaza. A day in the life vlog of what it's like to be in Gaza right now. She lays on the floor and tries to sleep in the midst of these horrifying sounds. And another TikTok from Deja Fox. We walked past the Supreme Court. Who advocates for abortion rights in the U.S. All these pills. have something the in common. They're siren calls. Die. Better ingredients, better pizza. Disguised better as pizza, fun, better trendy money, reels. Clothes, better my suits, better I work harder. And sometimes activists have to get clever to make sure their messages get out. But there's something you can do about it. On Instagram and Facebook, nudity is restricted, and users can't post content that promotes harmful activities targeted at people. And take TikTok. Users aren't allowed to post content that's sexually explicit or shocking and graphic, among other violations. That can make it hard to post videos about controversial issues, like war or abortion. Come with me to get arrested on Capitol Hill for abortion access. Deja is one of the most outspoken activists. Shut it down! And she's amassed nearly 4 million likes on TikTok alone. I think some of the hardest parts of creating content in the U.S. Um, is the platforms themselves. I think they can often feel kind of neutral, right? These neutral spaces where things do well or they don't, but that's not true. Fox is an activist and digital strategist who worked on US Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign. There absolutely is an element of strategy. It's the summer of rage, babe. It's time to stop thanking me in the comments and get out there yourself. She's a self-described girl's girl who posts a lot of content about reproductive justice and believes some of her reels have been flagged. Shortly after the overturn of Roe, I had all of these complaints from TikTok, the app, right? Flagging my videos for things like grooming. When the content I had made was about reproductive care, abortion, that was legal at the time in all 50 states, at the time that I made and posted the content. And retroactively, my account was punished. Um, my reach was diminished. It really had a chilling effect on what I was able to make and create and share um, at a time when people needed that information more than ever. It's really important that we remember the ways that code are informing not only our lives, but shaping how we then are able to interact with social media. University of Waterloo professor Brianna Weens researches online activism. She says a lot of the censorship activists warn of may not be an outright block, but what's known as a shadow ban. And so a shadow ban is um, when your content isn't necessarily flagged as inappropriate, um, but then gets buried under other information. Shadow banned accounts are put into a kind of invisible mode. No one except the account holder can see their own posts or comments. TikTok says shadow banning isn't a thing. And Meta tells us it's doing what it can to help creators understand when the reach of their reel may be limited. Still, creators are firm. They say shadow banning is real, and they've experienced it. 
And so some of the things I do and I, I see generally are things like, you know, subbing out letters um, or words uh, that we know uh, are being scanned. What worked for me a year ago, two years ago, six months ago, is not the kind of thing that might work in two weeks. Three Israeli hostages were gunned down by Israeli forces. Other tactics include a duet video like this. They confuse the algorithm by layering their videos with innocuous content, like a recipe. Taylor Swift pregnant with Travis Kelsey's baby revealed at the 2024 Oscars. I just want to remind you guys that there's still a genocide happening in Gaza right now. Or using popular hashtags that have nothing to do with the message. It's known as hash baiting. If you can, please donate. The link is in my bio. Multiple human rights groups have warned that platforms are silencing pro-Palestine content. We've also found isolated incidents of Israeli content being stifled. In an email, Meta tells us, there is no truth to the suggestion that we are deliberately suppressing voices. But activists don't buy it. Have you noticed that when you share something on Instagram to do with Free Palestine, you get less interaction and engagement than normal? Adele Walton is a British Turkish content creator and journalist. She's written about Palestine activists who've been posting about Gaza and makes pro-Palestine content herself. She says they've all been posting strategically. Things like face for the algorithm where people post a selfie and then they have a caption in relation to Free Palestine and what's happening in Gaza. I've seen a lot of TikTok commenters um, commenting things unrelated to the post. So say if someone does a post on Free Palestine, the comments will ask things like, where did you get your top from? Or what battery percentage is everyone on? That's effective because it increases engagement, which then gets the post in front of more people. That's the primary benefit of you sharing Palestine content. It increases its ranking. Is the um, watermelon another example? I think the fact that the watermelon emoji has become like synonymous for the Palestinian flag is an incredible example of that activism we see online. Young people have identified something that can be used to be symbolic in relation to Palestine, yet will subvert the algorithmic censorship that they've been subject to. Especially for us working in the broader China space, um, overcoming censorship is something that we often have to deal with realize that the Chinese authorities crack down and oppression against human rights and democratic freedoms affects every single one of us. Hong Kong activist Joey Su is currently living in exile because of her activism. There's a warrant out for her arrest if she returns to her home country. We have been sticking with um, social media platforms except for TikTok. They have been issuing shadow bans on any of our content. So a TikTok representative said that shadow banning isn't a thing. And I'm wondering what your response is to that. We have also heard from Twitter that, for example, shadow banning is not a thing. Um, however, what we have experienced is that we have seen activists whose um, usernames when put into the search bar it no longer appears. Um, we have also seen how, you know, on TikTok especially, how um, contents about, um, you know, anything that is in criticism of the Chinese Communist Party never showing in people's, you know, home pages. It's an always changing game of cat and mouse, with one side tweaking its algorithm and the other trying to get around it. Research shows that online activism has inspired real world action. In fact, it's completely changed activism by giving organizers unprecedented reach to new audiences all around the world. We've just never experienced in this kind of infinite connection that none of our parents or their parents could have even really imagined. Yes, it is absolutely because of these social media platforms, because they exist, but it is also because of the way uh, primarily teen girls have pushed their usages, have reimagined the way you could use them to create change and create community.